All right, I was to draw these runes yesterday for Woden's Day, Odin's Day, but I ran out of energy. So it's happening today on Thor's Day. Woden's Day is the day I normally draw three of these runes to see what the energies are. Before I draw anything, I'm just going to keep uh, shuffling the runes here. They don't uh, shake real well. You'll see why. Um, they don't sh shake up very well without some extra help. And uh, yeah, the energies like me to give a little extra help for that part of it. While I'm doing that, the message Yanari Kanori Shiatia Konovakia Chantshunya Nori Kinya Dara Shatatori Nori Kini Shieta Mora Kia Toro Kiyashina. We are as has come through recently, we are on a new plateau. That plateau may, f may make us feel restless. We've been so used to climbing, climbing, climbing. And we are now on a plateau and we are casting about, looking at what's here going every which way, the energies uh, may feel scrambled, the energies may feel lost to us, energies that we've gotten used to having close by because we were climbing and it was in our backpack, it was the boots we were wearing, it was the gear we were using to climb up, it was the rope, it was all of that. Now we are able to set those things aside for a bit, and we feel their absence. We don't know what it's like. We've forgotten what it was like to rest, to sit in a cabin, to sleep indoors, to have indoor plumbing, so to speak. These are all symbols, analogies, of course even though some of you maybe have literally been going through this, but and so it is an encouragement that no, you are not lost no, the, <laughs> the climbing gear you've used before you will likely need to use again the things that you needed to do before understand them as tools do not get caught up into being told to shut this up for a minute. Not told. <laughs> not told. Except by myself. No. It is... We may feel scared by this, particularly because we may look out at the world and see the same old world staring back at us in some ways, but understand that it is all different. It has all changed. Energetically, it has all changed, and so look for that. And in some ways, that's going to come out in absolute, unpredictable craziness. But that craziness is going to be so much, <laughs> so much less bad than the fears and worries of our past, of our parents' past, of our grandparents' past. And especially that is so to the degree that we who are holding space and energy, energetic space, even we who are holding time, 
as we continue to do so. So don't lose heart. Don't succumb to fear and doubt. And this is aimed squarely at myself. There's so much that I'm drawing on. There's so much that I know is enabling me, is walking with me, is preparing ways, and so on and so forth, guarding me, etc. But little Jared, nevertheless, feels fear, feels doubt. And this is how it is. This is how it is. That doesn't change. What changes is how we encounter that, how we push through it. You know, it's an old sort of trite saying that courage isn't not feeling fear, it's feeling the fear and walking ahead anyway. And, and of course that is true. And though it feels trite, sometimes it's just that simple. Sometimes it really is just that simple. All right, so something is energetically off here. There we go. Now it is correct. Because that's how we roll. And we're going to pull probably three runes here. This was a gift from Spirit. I don't know if I have shown it on camera before. A kind of burl from a very, very, very important tree. What I call a heart tree. It is near and dear to me, and also near geographically. <sighs> so, with the heart tree's blessing, the first rune to come out is the masculine energy. And I've just, this is interesting, because I've just been receiving it was almost like a little bell ringing there. I've just been receiving energy about the masculine and the feminine energy and just that the importance that we understand the degree to which we are all made up of both feminine and masculine. Even if we think we're not in touch with our feminine side and we present masculine or we present feminine and we think we're not in touch with our masculine side, is just not true. Okay, you wouldn't be able to exist <laughs> on this plane of being if you did not have a mixture. You would not be able to, because this, we, we, we confuse it so much with gender stereotypes and with biological sex. We confuse it so much that we do not understand that this is down at the very core of all being. I'm not talking about, like, <laughs> deeper, than, deeper than when people think of the Big Bang and think of all the stuff. It's deeper than that. It's deeper than that. Everything is polarity. It has to be. Otherwise, we would have nothing. We would have the void. We would have the one void. And it would be so much something that can't know itself that it might as well be nothing. Okay? The masculine here is about directed energy. There's polarity. There's direction. And there's receiving. Those are the two energies and there are so many ways they can work out, work themselves out, if you will. All right. Next. Okay, these are coming together. We have our three. This one came third. And the eye. The eye has been coming out of late. There's something that we can see from this vantage point. There, 
there's a certain amount of a way of looking out at the world that is a masculine way a go-getting kind of way and again do not be confused this is this is not about gender or biological sex this is about being in an energy that can look out at the world and direct oneself at what matters most for one to be directed at right now. That's what's coming through. And to complete this picture, the scythe has just also been coming out. Um, actually, all three of these have been coming out. And uh, it's so interesting because I did a lot of shuffling in there and apparently I shuffled them right back. And if that's what happened, then that's what was supposed to happen. This is harvest. So this is, again, this is this confirms what I already said. What Spirit was already pushing through here, which is we are looking out in that directed energy at the world. The fields are ripe. The harvest time is here. And indeed, that's the time of year we're at, too. I'm receiving a lot right now that we are in a, a bit of a cooling off period, but things are going to heat right back up. We are heading towards August in the northern hemisphere. That means the hottest time of the year is right now. Where I am, we are actually going through a cooling off. Um, the weather has cooled substantially. Um, but we know it will heat up again as we move to August. It always does. It's not unusual to get a brief cooling um, right at this time of the year. Um, and even if it's not as cool as, you know, it, it might feel hot compared to earlier in the year, um, compared to, you know, the, the summer heat, it, it feels cool. It feels like relief. And so we're gearing up, though. We're gearing up, and we know that this time is coming of... It's going to be hard work. That's what I'm getting. It's going to be hard work. A time of hard work. A time of, you know, again, maybe not personally or individually, but a time of early mornings and late nights and lots of work in between. Um, at least symbolically, and even if that's not exactly what it means for a particular person who's listening, you know, it's, it's nose to the grindstone type energy, and it's, but it's directed, it's not in a bad way, it's opportunistic, right? There's nothing more opportunistic than harvesting a field. It's all just sitting there. The, the, the term low-hanging fruit, right? That you go for it. Go get it. It's there. And that's that's what's coming through. Just go get it. It's there. Of course, this is as directed at me as, <laughs> as it could possibly be. And also, hopefully, helpful to others. Be comforted. Be comforted. Understand the timings. The timings are right. They are not wrong. Prepare as best you can. Throw away anxiety. Look for opportunity. Be instant when you see it. This is all that's coming through right now. So I will send much love and peace and all the light you can possibly stand. It's going to be bright. August 8th, 
2024 Lionsgate Portal. I'm not making predictions. That is not, not. <laughs> I'm way too old for that. <sighs> so much too old for that. Because there are many, many things that can happen and there are many, many timelines and we all experience all of them. And the particular tune of this message is reaching out to particular vibrational frequencies, threads, if you will, in those who hear this, that is meant for the timeline that you are headed towards <laughs> from this timeline that you are on. And so, no predictions, but the light will be bright and intense. There will be much empowering energy coming in to fuel especially those who are prepared so and that <laughs> that with all irony could be simply floating down a river on vacation and soaking up that energy it might look like that it might look like literally harvesting a garden or a field or some kind of an orchard or what have you. It could look many different ways. It could be working in an office. It could be creating something. It can be a lot of different things. And of course, worldwide it will be a time of energy coming in that is going to set up the next seven years I've received since last year the last Lionsgate portal did not close in a sense that's why the sun has been so bright and intense if you felt the solar energies in a sense this portal has been open for a year it will redouble in intensity August 8th around then give or take if you want to know exactly when check when Sirius becomes visible above the horizon line in the northern hemisphere where you're at that is when it will really kick off for you. It doesn't really matter, though. Okay, again. Blessings, friends. Till next time.